Hi students, in this video we're going to look at a new theorem that we use in, with polynomials called the remainder theorem. Right, so after watching this video you should be able to recall the remainder theorem and also apply the remainder theorem to determine remainders when polynomials are divided by a linear factor or also calculate other parameters when provided with enough information. But things to remember, so we're relying on a bit on what we've done in previous lessons regarding polynomial division, and in particular, this result here that says p of x can be expressed as our linear divisor x minus a times our quotient function q and our remainder at the end. We're going to be using that form when discussing the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem uh, uses the idea that something interesting happens when we determine the value of p of a, that is when we substitute our a value into our polynomial. So let's look at what that looks like. So if we've got p of a, that means we're substituting in a for whatever we see in x. So that will be a minus a times q of a plus r. Now what's going to happen here is a times a minus a is just going to give us zero. So then if we've got zero times q of a, that whole term is just going to equal zero. And so p of a is going to equal zero times r, or p of a is going to be the same value as our remainder. Now we could get our remainder just by applying polynomial division, but that takes time, easy to make mistakes. So if we want to know our remainder, when dividing by x minus a, the interesting result is our remainder is equal to the value of our polynomial at x equals a. So get our polynomial, sub in the value of a, and that gives us our remainder. Now this is the result called the remainder theorem. So when a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus a, the remainder is equal to the value of our polynomial when x equals a. So rather than going through and doing all of that polynomial division to find our remainder, we can just substitute in a, and that tells us our remainder right away. All right, so let's use that in an example. So determine the remainder when p of x, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 is divided by x plus 2. Now, here, remember, our factor is of the form x minus a. So in this situation, our a value is not positive 2. Our a value is negative 2. A, x subtract negative 2 gives us x plus 2. So because of that minus sign for a, that minus sign in front of a in our divisor, when we look at our brackets, the sign of a is actually the opposite. So it's not positive 2, it is negative 2. And now we can find our remainder by substituting that value into our equation. p of not a, p of negative 2 equals, and we'll put all this in brackets, negative 2 cubed plus 2 times negative 2 squared minus 5 times negative 2 plus 2. All right, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 2 squared is positive 4 times 2 is positive 8. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10 and plus 2. Negative 8 plus 8 cancel, which equals 12. And that value, according to the remainder theorem, is our remainder. So the remainder, when p of x, this value here, is divided by x plus 2, our remainder is always going to be 12. That value um, of our polynomial, when we substitute it in negative 2. All right, so let's do another example. Um, this time we've got an unknown value here, k. And we know when this polynomial is divided by 3, the remainder is negative 2. 
So we have to determine the value of k. Looking at our linear factor, okay, our a value, it's not negative 3, it's the opposite sign, it's positive 3. So our remainder is going to be equal to uh, our polynomial at value of 3, which we're told is negative 2. So let's substitute our 3 into our polynomial. 3 cubed minus 3 squared plus 3k plus 1 equals negative 2 plus 1. 3 uh, cubed is 27. Let's just write it out. Minus 9 plus 3k plus 1 equals negative 2. So 27 minus 9 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. So 3k plus 19 equals negative 21, equals negative 2, sorry. Working a bit ahead of myself. Now subtracting 19 from both sides. 3k equals negative 21. k must be negative 7. And that's how we can use the remainder theorem just to find out a value like k in our polynomial function. Right, so after watching this video, you should be able to recall the remainder theorem and then apply that remainder theorem to help you determine remainders when polynomials are divided by linear factors or work out other values given enough information.